When we look for a takeoff which will allow us to clear an obstacle off the end of a short runway, we're looking for the speed that will give us the best angle of climb. This speed is called VX. Here's a quick review of VX, or check out the previous video linked above. VX is determined from the aircraft's drag curve. There are two general forms of drag, parasite drag, which increases as speed increases, and induced drag, which increases as speed decreases. The total drag curve is the sum of these two, and is U-shaped. The very bottom point is the minimum total drag speed, which also gives us our best glide speed, or VG. Now, the best angle of climb speed, VX, will occur where we have the maximum amount of excess thrust. That is to say, we have all the thrust required to counter drag on the U-shaped curve and have the most amount remaining of our thrust available. Because of the shape of the thrust available curve in a piston aircraft, the max excess thrust will occur here, at a lower speed than VG. This is where we find VX, and our best angle of climb. Sometimes, though, we want not the best angle of climb, but the best rate of climb. This means the fastest climb to a given altitude. When we looked at the best angle, we were looking at force, which is why thrust and drag, two of the four forces of flight, were used. When we're talking about rate, which is measured in distance and time, we want to look at power. Our engine is measured in horsepower, which is the power used to move the weight of our aircraft a given distance in a given amount of time. Because thrust and power aren't the same thing in our piston-driven engine, the power required to achieve the thrust on the blue curve will look a bit different. Notice how skewed it is at slow speeds. It takes a fair amount of power to fly an airplane slowly while maintaining a level flight, as induced drag is highest at these speeds. By the same token, the power available curve will look a bit different too, as engine efficiencies change with airspeeds. To gain our best rate of climb, we want to find the speed that affords us the maximum excess power, which we find out here, and it's called VY. The difference can be illustrated by two aircraft taking off on a runway without worrying about an obstacle to clear. If we time one minute from each aircraft's rotation, we can see that the aircraft climbing at VY reaches a higher altitude in this time, but does so at a lower angle than that aircraft flying at VX. So in the absence of an obstacle to clear, which speed works best? Here's an important fact to consider. If we find the low point on the power required curve, we could split up the curve into two sections. Above this speed, an increase in speed requires an increase in power, and a decrease in speed requires a decrease in power. This normal relationship makes this the so-called region of normal command. Below this boundary point though, any decrease in speed will require an increase in power to maintain equilibrium. Remember that induced drag takes over at these lower speeds, and the only antidote is to power up on the engine to counteract it. A subsequent increase in speed again, and will require less power. This inverse relationship makes this the region of reverse command. Here's the important point. Vx is to be found in this region. Flight at best angle of climb speed takes place in reverse command. It's also slower than both Vy and the best glide speed, Vg. Flight at VX requires a lot more attention to pitch, power, and airspeed. In the region of reverse command, a pitch increase won't result in the airplane gaining altitude. It'll only cause airspeed to bleed off even more, getting closer to a stall. If a takeoff requires a climb at VX due to a short field and obstacles, this speed should be maintained only for as long as it's necessary to safely clear any obstacles, and then the aircraft should be accelerated to VY. In addition to gaining the normal side of the power curve, we're also pitched down and can see more. If we have a sudden loss of power, we can more easily pitch for our best glide speed, be able to spot a landing field, and make a normal glide to land. If we were at VX at this point, the aircraft would be much less responsive to control, and we'd have to pitch down to accelerate to VG, losing precious altitude. But having established our best angle of climb speed on climb out, we can execute a more normal glide to emergency landing. If you're not busy right now, why don't you keep your training going by watching some of these videos here, and you can subscribe to stay up to date on all the new releases and training articles that are coming out and more. Head on over to the website, flight-insight.com to really kickstart your flight training.